Okay, this tutorial is for uh, network uh, administrators and installing uh, networked licenses of Sidewinder. Uh, this, the setup for uh, Sidewinder is pretty straightforward. Uh, essentially, it's just uh, got two parts. One is installing the HASP USB drivers. Uh, the second is installing the software, uh, the Sidewinder software itself. So when you get the, uh, the software, you'll get a USB uh, um, dongle. Uh, the green ones are standalone licenses. Uh, the red ones will be the network licenses. Now, uh, Sidewinder license is in the dongle, so please make sure your users um, treat that accordingly. Um, Sidewinder does not expire. Uh, you do not have to access the internet or anything for licensing. Uh, the, the USB dongle is your license. Um, so if that license, uh, you know, if the, if the dongle gets broken or something happens, you can send that back and, and we'll replace it. Um, but if the dongle gets lost, that's a different story. Um, if you lose your uh, Dell notebook computer, you can't call Dell and say, hey, I lost it, send me a new one. Um, that the software licenses is in that dongle. Like I say, it doesn't expire. That is your license. So treat it accordingly. Um, you also get a DVD and a white uh, USB memory stick. Uh, exact same files on both of these. Uh, it's just obviously one's on a DVD, the other's a USB uh, um, stick. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, jump over to uh, this is a PC that's on uh, my network. Um, so this would be, for example, the client PC, or I mean, sorry, the, the server PC. So the server PC could be one of the users. It could be the main Sidewinder user. It could be any PC on your network, or it can be on your server. Um, so what we'll do is go into this, the software and into the HASP license dongle. We'll go ahead and run this HASP user setup. And that goes ahead and installs the HASP USB drivers. Now, this is a, a software product by Jamalto. Um, it's external from AC Tech. Uh, so, yep, you have to accept their license agreements. Um, like I say, this is a, a product that, that we purchased from them for, for the software licensing. Uh, so that go ahead, goes ahead and installs the uh, USB drivers. Usually just takes a second. Uh, most of the times you'll need to reboot uh, your, your PC. Um, I've installed and uninstalled it on this PC, so I, I won't have to. Um, the other important and very important note is that the HASP driver uses port 1947. That port's not open by default on Windows 7 or Windows 10. Um, you can go ahead and change that to anything you want, um, but that port is the uh, 1947 is the, is their default port, and I'll show you how to change that if you want to. Um, but as we'll see, you need to open that port for the network version to, to work. So we've installed the dongle, uh, the USB dongle on the server, and I'm just going to install Sidewinder. Same type of thing. Read through your network agreement. Uh, agree with it. Where do you want to install the software? Um, now, the, uh, the server, you don't necessarily have to install the Sidewinder software. It's just kind of nice because you can debug and make sure it's working. Um, so there we go. We've installed the software and the USB driver. If I go ahead and just open a web browser and I go to localhost uh, 1947, as you know, localhost is simply the IP. I could also type in the IP address of this PC, exact same thing. Um, but if you do that, you should see the Sentinel Admin Control Center. Again, you may have had to reboot after installing the USB drivers. Um, and when you go under Sentinel Keys, you should see the dongle. Oh, I don't see the dongle because my notebook's sitting right here and I don't have it plugged in. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the USB dongle. And there it is. Now, there are some really nice uh, features in here. You don't have to change any of these uh, by default. But if you go under configuration, um, you can set whether users can log in or not log into this control center. Um, you can set a password, all those sorts of things. Uh, the idle timeout is probably the biggest thing the administrators may want to change. Uh, that's default to 720 minutes, which is quite a while. Um, but this is basically the inactive time that the users can use the software. So if you've got one license and a guy's using it and then he goes home for the night, well, you know, do you want to kick him off after an hour so other people can, can use it? Um, you want it long enough that he doesn't go to lunch and come back and find out that he got kicked off and he forgot to save his file or whatever and he got, got kicked off. But, um, but obviously, you know, 10 hours might be a bit extreme. So that's just something uh, that, that you can 
one of the things that you can set. Um, otherwise, uh, there's really not a whole lot here. Um, uh, the, all the defaults are fine on the server side of things. Um, so I'm going to close that. If I go ahead and launch server, the uh, Sidewinder, again, this is on the server PC. It should boot right up, and it does. And I can check and make sure it's running. If I just open a new file or create a new file and hit run, it's that just ran the ran a calculation. And I apologize for the screen size here. Um, I'm found sh sharing my screen over, over the network here. Um, if we go to help about, we can see this happens to be lessons to whatever. I just called the company. Um, one other thing uh, just for uh, you to know under user preferences, if you have users that have the old uh, Alterpo keys and now you're using the new HASP dongles, um, old the old users have to still they use this, the Alterpo version. Uh, the new version, this has to be set as, as the HASP version. Um, Sidewinder um, on all new installations defaults to the HASP. What actually goes out and looks for a dongle on both if it can't find it on HASP the first time it, it checks for Ultra Pro as well, um, but then it defaults back to HASP. So if you do have some users that have some of the old, uh, maybe standalone or whatever Ultra Pro um, dongles, they would need to switch to HASP when they want to log into the network. So that's pretty much it. We've got it up and running on the server. We know that works. So now we can go ahead and switch to a local PC, um, which I will just jump back here to my local PC. And I've already <clears throat> installed the software locally. So that's I've, I've done the same thing. I've installed the USB drivers. I've installed Sidewinder on my local PC. And if I go to localhost, Again, on the local PC, they should see it. And if I look under Sentinel keys, I can see I, I don't have any dongles. There's the dongle is not installed. However, you sh they should be able to access 192, what, whatever your server IP address is, colon 1947, and that should come up. Well, it doesn't. Why doesn't it? It's because that port is blocked by default. 1947 is blocked by default. So I need to go back to just close all this. I need to go back to my server PC. And if I um, go under my firewall, the Windows firewall settings, uh, you can do one of two things. Um, one, I could just go into the public network and just and just turn it off and test it and make sure that then it's working. Um, that's fine, but you probably typically don't want to do that because it's just turning off your firewall. Um, uh, instead, if I go under advanced settings here, I can go ahead and make an inbound rule, and I'm going to say new rule, and I'm going to open up a port. As we said, we need to open a port, 1947. And again, you can set this anything you want. Um, you could even change it to 80, which is the default uh, um, web uh, browser port, um, and that's probably typically open on most most. Uh, um, networks if you want. Um, you can now obviously set up all kinds of, of things of who you want to use it and whether you want it to be a, a, a range of IP addresses. You can change all that. I'm going to just open it up for now and we'll call that Sidewinder. Sorry, it's B, Winder, whatever I want. And I can just say, um, you know, give it a description if you want. I'm not going to say finished and that's pretty much it um, a lot of times you do need to reboot or actually if I found that if I just unplug and replug the USB dongle um, that'll typically um, usually reset it so now if we go back to this is now on my local PC here um, if I go back and try to access the server so again this is the server IP that I just opened up the firewall uh, I can see it and now I see the the, the, the key so once I'm able to do that, you should be able to launch Sidewinder. So if I go right into Sidewinder and I go ahead and start it, there it is. If I say new file and run, boom, Sidewinder is up and running again. Up about, there's the company. Everything's working perfectly. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, the, again, the only trick is on the, uh, oops, sorry, I actually, sorry, I was running that on the, on the client PC. I'm going to start it on my local PC here. There we go. This is now running locally. 
um, on the client PC. And again, it sees it, no problem. Uh, the, the local PC on my local PC, if I open up my, my web browser on my local PC and I look at that on the server PC, I should be able to see, yep, there I am. Cruz work is connected. Um, and you can see all users using it. The only other thing you may want to do on each client PC. So again, here I'm logged into the server. If I type localhost, this is logging into now the client's local administration control center. Um, if under there I go under the configuration and access to remote license managers. So if I go under that, I can actually put in whatever your server address is. In this case, it happens to be 192.168.115.180. That's where I currently just have this logged into my uh, notebook computer I've got set up as, as the, uh, the server PC. And you need to check this aggressive search button, those two options. If I do that, it's just going to always look at that specific address for the IP address. And that um, sometimes if you have problems, that, that will solve it by going directly to it. Um, by default, the server is actually broadcasting that. Um, and if you go back to the server PC, if we went back to the server PC here, um, we could actually turn that broadcast if we wanted. We could turn that broadcast off. Um, and you can set, like I say, lots and lots of other things, whether you want access or you don't act, want access, all that sort of thing. Um, but by default, that'll set that off or set, set that to the permanent um, thing. Um, I think the only other thing I was going to mention, if you do uh, want, you can change that IP address. Most users don't, but if for some reason you wanted to go in and change that, um, let me just go in and show you where that's at. If you go on the, the Sidewinder CD-ROM again and under the HASP uh, dongle driver, same place where the HASP setup was, there's this hat, HASP port utility. Um, if you run that, it's essentially just a little batch file that will come up and give you some options. Uh, number one will set the port to 80, which is a default web port. Two will set it back to the default 1947. If you type in three, you can just enter any port you want, and four will exit without any changes. So that's just a, a little bat file I, I wrote for, for end users. It's actually really simple. If you look at it, all this is doing is simply setting this registry key right there and the port number. That's all this batch file is doing is setting that registry key. So you can manually go ahead and, and do a regedit and change the port if you want right there. Um, so that does it. If you have any questions, let me know. But hopefully this solves a lot of um, user setup issues for Sidewinder.